Uh, <clears throat> thank you for coming tonight. We are uh, live streaming this uh, to a lot of people out there. And uh, we want this message to go out far and wide. Uh, so tonight is, is very important. Now, any of you that have heard the shadow government speech uh, before, this is that speech on steroids. So uh, I think we'll, we'll have some eye-opening stuff here that I think a lot of people are going to see. And God willing, we'll, we'll be able to make a change. Uh, I always like to say uh, I call myself a recovering CIA officer. Um, I go through... Uh, uh, CI Officers Anonymous, uh, but, but that group is not a 12-step program. It's a 24-step program. Uh, the first 12 steps, we learn how to tell the truth again, and that's the hardest part. Uh, I also like to say that, that uh, when you're a CI whistleblower, there are some perks to that, believe it or not. Uh, for example, uh, I get my mail is open before I get it. It's kind of nice. It's like, well, thank you for that. Uh, somebody's already been, been in it. Uh, my cell phone turns itself on and off, uh, especially when I have these meetings. My wife will tell you the cell phone will just come on right before we come and do this sort of thing. Well, that's convenient, though. That you, could, you could look at that maybe as a perk, couldn't you? Um, we, uh, if I ever get lost, we travel a lot. And if, if I ever get lost, uh, there's always someone following me. So I, I can go back and ask directions, you know, which is, that's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, there are some perks for doing this, and, um, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else, I'll tell you that much. Um, so it's been pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to start out a little lighthearted because this is a, a very, very uh, heavy topic. As my friend who introduced me and I talked about earlier, we're not just at the 11th hour, we're at the 11th hour 59 minute point in this country constitutionally. I'm sorry to say that we, we are living under a post-constitutional government in America now, and it's getting worse by the hour. There's a war going on in Washington. I'll talk about some of that tonight. Uh, some of this information is the first that we've ever presented. Uh, and as some of you know, I take a bit of a risk in doing this um, every time I do it, and we've been living this for about four years, but uh, it has to be done because this is so important what we're up against uh, in, in this country. Uh, I consider myself really duty bound. Um, I touched on. Yeah, you, thank you. Honey, I am so afraid you're going. <laughs> yeah, thank. And, and you are now famous. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. I appreciate. You know, I was kind of watching that. Thank you. I owe you some kind of safety award, or uh, there'll be a, a brown a brown bag wrapped up in the back for you later on. I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I touched on this in California. If any, did anybody out there see the California speech that I gave, uh, I think it was this past July? Uh, that speech, I think, to date has hit uh, 2 million views, I think, already on, on uh, YouTube. And it's, it's gone viral. And that is just a fragment of what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, I'm going to get into quite a bit of detail. Uh, and we're going to go the full span. So feel free, if you, have, if you have to get up and move or something, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're live streaming this to a lot of people out there. And, the primary purpose of tonight is to do that because we want to get this message out to as many people as we can. So thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> I give this speech to uh, any group that will take the risk to do it. Uh, some do and some don't. Um, the uh, mainstream media has avoided this, and I, I will explain why that is later on. You'll see why that is. There are a lot of sectors that, that don't want this information becoming public. Um, I talked to GOP groups, constitutional groups, libertarian groups, uh, Tea Party groups, and I have to tell you, I meet some of the most wonderful people you could meet at these meetings. Just, just freedom-loving, um, good Americans uh, you meet coming to these, to these speeches, and it's really fulfilling for me. It's the best of the best. Um, I was asked, uh, I have a good friend, Dane Wigington, out on the West Coast. Uh, the first speech, uh, anybody took the risk uh, to let me get up and talk about this was Dane out in California. He's the pres president of Geo geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, he is probably one of the most professional uh, people I've ever worked with. Now, I am no expert on geoengineering by any stretch. That's Dane's uh, area of expertise. Uh, he asked me to come and talk about my expertise, and that is uh, government cover-up, the shadow government, and how they silence whistleblowers. So that's, that's what I do. Um, he doesn't talk about chemtrails. Uh, 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 Dane, just in, uh, in his... Uh, Credit talks about geoengineering. Now, the, the interesting part of that is that one of the reasons I went out to talk to Dane and his group was the director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council on Foreign Relations. Anybody know what that is? We'll talk about that tonight. And you, some of that is, will curl people's hair. 
The director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council of Foreign Relations last year and said that he has gained a personal interest in geoengineering and specifically uh, strategic aerosol injection. That the CIA and the Council of Foreign Relations are interested in geoengineering. Now, I can tell you, as a former CIA officer, if they come out, the CIA comes out and says anything publicly like that before the Council of Foreign Relations, which created the CIA, you need to take note of that. Because if they're saying it publicly, my experience being in there is they're already doing it. Or they've been planning on doing it for some time. So you, you can actually go on CIA.gov and you can see John Brennan give that presentation before the Council on Foreign Relations. So maybe Dane's on to something. But I want to give him credit because he's the first person that, that had the, 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 the guts to let me come out and talk about some of this stuff in public. So kudos to him. Uh, all right. I also like to, like to say uh, I am not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican. I'm a, I'm a constitutionalist. I'm, I'm an independent. For me, uh, it's all about the Constitution based on where I come from, and I've seen some of the, the worst of the worst. Um, I, this is not a, a conservative or liberal talk at all. It's completely nonpartisan. What I'm trying to do is bring people together under the United States Constitution because what they want to do is they want to divide us and split us apart. And if they can do that, especially globally, they can eliminate what America is and the unity that we have. And you can see that with all the unrest and all the racial stuff and all the protests. A lot of that is coming down from some of the globalist financiers that are financing some of these groups with the intent of dividing America. So I want everybody to understand that. Don't fall into that trap because they're trying to split us up. And it comes from a, a global level. Uh, I'm doing this because uh, I adore this country and our constitutional government and our constitutional republic. That's what drives me and that's what motivates me. Um, I risked my life for this country literally when I was in the CIA. And, and I'm seeing this country being degraded and taken apart. Uh, sadly, the CIA is a part of that. And we'll be talking about that. Um, I risked my, my life. I swore an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. Sadly, one of our biggest enemies to our, our freedoms happens to be a domestic one. And it's coming from our own government. And uh, that sounds shocking when you first say it. But when we get into some detail here and we actually prove it, uh, you'll find out that it is indeed the truth. That from the inside out is, uh, is where the attack is coming from, the really serious one. Uh, there are certain dark parts of our own government I call personally the shadow government. That's what we'll be talking about. Some call it the deep state, and the deep state does exist. Uh, what my point is coming from the CIA is the deep state and the shadow government are not the same thing. They're used interchangeably, but the shadow government and the deep state are not the same entity. They are joined together in a matrix, but they are not one and the same. And I'll explain how that is, why that is. And it's important to know that. They're both a threat to... Uh, to our Constitution. Uh, I come from the belly of the beast, the deep secret inner workings of the government that no one sees on the outside, the massive system of secrecy and the matrix of secret intelligence agencies that are now manipulating our elected officials behind the scenes. There's a serious threat to our democracy and our constitutional republic by the shadow government and its, its associated deep state. In a few years, we may no longer have a constitutional republic. Some people think that we, we already don't, do not have a constitutional republic. And I, sadly, personally happen to be one of those. That the Constitution is, is over, except for those of us that still adhere to it as the supreme law of the land. Uh, the government has superseded that in, in a gross fashion. And we're going to talk about that uh, in detail this evening. If you could, please uh, hold your questions till the end, and I will be available at the back table when we are done. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions that I can. I've met some of you personally that I've been talking with online and some, some folks from previous uh, speeches, so it's so good to have you here. Um, and we're live streaming to a lot, a lot of folks, so welcome to everyone that's watching this tonight. We hope that uh, we'll cause a bang. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to focus on the shadow government. The unconstitutional power of government secrecy. I call it the tyranny of secrecy. Our government has such a powerful, large matrix system of secrecy that it has literally taken over our elected government in a, in a very complex fashion. They've been doing this for almost 60 years, and they've got it perfected. I always like to start my talks with this because it is so important. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's not 
a document of philosophy. It's not a, a written piece of ideology that's just a nice way for a country to do business or, or a, an ideology to follow. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's, it's, it supersedes the entire criminal justice system that we have underneath it. And that's important to understand because if someone violates the Constitution, they are breaking the law. It's a felony. Okay? So if the government or any government agency violates the Constitution, like the Fourth Amendment, for example, they're breaking the law. That's a felony. That applies to, to citizens, and it applies to the government also. So if we remember that, we understand that, we're going to want to hold some people in Washington accountable for some of the things that are going on there. I mentioned that the shadow government and the deep state are two different entities, although they are joined together in this vast matrix that we see in Washington, D.C., and beyond. The deep state is the secret government, all of the secret intelligence agencies that are functioning in the dark behind the scenes. That is the shadow government, and it binds much of the deep state with secrecy, secret oaths, secrecy agreements, and other things that bind a lot of large contractors and others from saying anything about what they see. The deep state, however, is the system, and you can see I put a dollar sign on system. The deep state is a system behind government. The military-industrial complex, I'll be talking about that. The currency of the shadow government is the power of secrecy, fear, and intimidation. That's the shadow government. I know because I was a part of that. I was a counterintelligence officer, interviewer, and uh, that's how it works. The currency of the deep state is money, power, and greed. So they're two different things. They're, they're joined together, which I'll explain, but they're two different things that function with, with two different systems of control that are manipulating our government behind the scenes. Let's look at this. I want to show you all the size, the power, and the extent of the shadow government or the secret government. This is the size. Each, each organization that I'm about to show you up here functions in secrecy and is bound by secret oaths from saying anything about what they see. When I was in there, uh, I, was, I was in there during the Iran-Contra scandal and some other things, and you cannot talk about anything that you see, even if it's illegal or, or unconstitutional, because there's a system to sy systematically destroy you if you do. So, you remember the Council on Foreign Relations established in 1921? came largely from the banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, and others, formed the Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations, uh, eventually, with the same members of the CFR, created the CIA. I think 21 CIA directors have all been members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, that is an unconstitutional organization, and it has been since its founding in 1921. I'll get into that. And, and this is, I'm taking a library of information and research and trying to trying to distill this down and into, into as short as I can get it. So there's a lot of stuff here, but we'll, we'll try to keep it simple. Then we, this, the Council on Foreign Relations in the beginning and the CIA had a direct established contract with the mainstream media. Philip and Catherine Graham of the Washington Post were members of the Council on Foreign Relations and directly connected to the CIA and directly connected to the CIA and, and CFR's program of pumping information into the news media for propaganda of the American people. And... Uh, do you think that still continues today? There's no doubt about it. I will prove it later on. Most people will say, ah, that passed away in 1976 with the end of Operation Mockingbird. Operation Mockingbird did not end. A lot of, a lot of you shaking your heads, you know what I'm talking about. It's still here. Mainstream media is involved directly. Then you've got, of course, our beloved NSA. Uh, I know a couple of uh, senior NSA whistleblowers. We tend to be friends when you're doing what we do because it's a small circle of riskies. Um, and they've got a lot of things to say about NSA domestic surveillance and spying. So the NSA was created not through, by Congress, but via executive order outside of the Constitution, which most people don't know. It's got the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or the FISA Court, which is a secret Supreme Court that functions outside of Congress and outside of the American people, and nobody knows what it does except grant warrants to domestically spy on U.S. citizens which it has done in a gross fashion, as most of us know, with the NSA domestic surveillance program. More on that later. Silicon Valley now is, is directly connected to NSA. That's the way that the government does it, the CIA and the NSA. They approach Silicon Valley companies. I was in a military industrial complex. I was a program manager. They are always looking for big multi-million dollar contracts. That's how you survive. That's how you stay alive. So the NSA, the CIA comes to them and says, hey, we got a five, $10 million contract. You sign up, we'll give this to you, and you can hook into Yahoo and Google and everybody else, 
and uh, you know it's worth uh, in this case about 500 million dollars total so your average program managers I'll take it and they sign up what the CIA and the NSA do then because I, I executed thousands of these they make you sign the piece of paper okay you got this multi-million dollar contract but you cannot have access to anything until you sign the secrecy oath or the secrecy agreement with the CIA and NSA which threatens you with administrative action termination or prison if you mention anything connected with that operation you can go to jail or worse um, that's how they do it Joint Special Operations Command is the president's people don't know this exists it's the president's private army the president of the United States can send the secret JSOC out in any country and I think they're out there right now into any country to conduct a special secret operation against that group of people to neutralize or whatever needs to be done in secret that's the JSOC the director of national intelligence 17 federal agencies made up of tens of thousands of people are engaged in the shadow or secret government 17 different intelligence agencies are part of the shadow government it's massive I'll show you the size here in a moment Department of Homeland Security has its own secret branches Department of State has its own secret branches you remember when Secretary Hillary Clinton secretly ran guns into Libya Benghazi without anybody knowing about it without Congress knowing about it those guns were given to the Free Syrian Army in, in uh, Benghazi and eventually up outside of Syria. The Free Syrian Army, claiming to be moderate Islamic rebels, many of them morphed into, guess who? ISIS. ISIS is now using U.S. tanks, U.S. weapons, and trained U.S. fighters. Some of which, they got some of the weapons from Iraq when we bailed out of Iraq. But a lot of ISIS branched out of the Free Syrian Army and they have a lot of our weapons uh, that they're using that we sent over there. That was conducted in secret. Did anybody here vote for that? Did anybody here vote for arming the Free Syrian Army in Syria with weapons? I don't see any hands. I never do because we didn't. We didn't even know what was going on. That is the shadow government. Defense Intelligence Agency, another branch of intelligence, were actually caught setting up a program to gain informants inside the United States to have U.S. citizens spy on other U.S. citizens. They were caught by Congress. The program was shut down. They were directly involved in the torture program, which was more than waterboarding, by the way. Uh, people died. It was a lot worse than just pouring water on people's heads. It was pretty bad. Uh, I think they're still under investigation for some of the things that they did to an extreme in, in the torture program. National Reconnaissance Office. All the satellites that are around the Earth, the spy satellites, the technology of which would blow your mind. So I'm just not going there. <laughs> Let's just say... That's another branch of the, of the shadow government that, that's up there circulating around. And uh, the technology that is out there, all the way down to nanotechnology, is mind-blowing. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, most people don't know this, but they approached Google, and they assisted with a contract, paying a lot of money to help Google set up Google Earth. So, and we all know what Google Earth can. They can come down and see what kind of tomatoes I'm growing if they want to. So the NG, do you think that the federal government has a hand in Google Earth and coming down and looking at, at your house and your barn? They helped create it. So is there, is there any individual privacy anymore? It's gone. It, it, it's dead. What they can do uh, is incredible. And it increases by the quarter. National Geospatial Intelligence, the FBI, warrantless search program, where they can break Robert Mueller authorize this where they can break into your house without a warrant search your house and leave without you ever knowing they were there gross violation of the fourth amendment we i'll try to keep this short but robert Mueller testified under oath uh fabricated three times they only broke into americans house 47 times they came back and said well sir we haven't had evidence that it was probably more like 2000 and now he's under oath oh okay it was 2000 or sir we have evidence that it's even more than that well, they got him up to 4,000 times that they'd broken into Americans' homes without a warrant. Finally, when they got him above that, they said, uh, Director Mueller, you're not being straight with us. How many times has the FBI broken into Americans' homes? If you can imagine, his response was this. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, do we buy that one? I don't think so. Uh, under oath. We'll get into that a little bit later. So, so here we've got the shadow or secret, gov secret government. I will get into the magnitude of this thing, the power of this thing, the unconstitutionality of this thing. Uh, and it is mind-blowing. That's just the shadow government. That's not the deep state. This is the deep state. The shadow government is connected to the deep state, and it binds much of it 
through secrecy oaths, secret contracts, and secret agreements that they are bound by life with. For example, Lockheed Martin and other companies have CI contracts. They're bound by the secrecy oath. They can never talk about, about what they're doing. I'll talk about some of it because I got it from open source, and I know how to do that. So, because I have to be real careful. I have to watch everything I say. This is the deep state. It does exist. There were some of us, a few of us, that were talking about the deep state five years ago when it wasn't cool. Uh, and no one would say a thing about it. Now, if you listen to any talk show now, they're all talking about the deep state because it's kind of safe. Everybody's talking about the deep state. But they're claiming, well, they're, they're Obama holdovers uh, in, in the deep state. And that's really what it is. Uh, uh, that's a smokescreen. The deep state and shadow government go back for every, every presidential administration going back to 1947. So it's not Obama holdovers. And I'll show you why in a moment. It is massive. The military, military industrial complex, Eisenhower, when he gave that speech, originally called it the military industrial congressional complex. Because Congress is tied in so deeply with, with the military industrial complex, it's disgusting. <clears throat> but uh, they uh, convinced him to take Congress out of the military industrial complex speech that he gave. Congress is very much involved in the military complex and the deep state. And you'll see in a moment why. They promise us one thing and then they vote on something exactly the opposite. The lobbyists in Washington, D.C., I think, spend $4.8 million a year lobbying the Congress and the Senate to get their way. We'll call it the MIC just for short. Wall Street, directly connected to the deep state at the hip, and it is so connected to the Treasury now, they're almost like business partners. And a lot of Wall Street has billions in offshore accounts that nobody knows about, connected to, directly to the D D Department of Treasury, which has a secret database on us, by the way. Most people don't know that. Treasury has its own secret database. It has opened the back door for the NSA and the CIA to come in and look at financial information on us. Just found that out. Foreign lobbyists, Israel and Saudi Arabia, I'm not making a comment on either one, but they might as well have a Senate or congressional seat. The amount of power and influence they have over our elected officials is phenomenal. And the millions and millions of dollars that they contribute is also phenomenal. Defense contractors bound by the deep state. Intelligence contractors. I will get into these. There's something that I call <clears throat> the secret intelligence uh, complex, industrial complex. We've got the military industrial complex. We've got the secret uh, intelligence industrial complex, just as big, just as powerful. Nobody knows about it. We'll talk about that. The Federal Reserve. <clears throat> you could call this the economic shadow government. If anybody has studied the Federal Reserve, my gosh, and when you know how that thing operates and what it's doing, it took the freedom, the constitutional freedom economic of Americans away in 1913, that far back. It is run by international bankers in secret. It is not a federal agency. It is a private bank made up of international bank, banks that run our entire economic policy. So this is an economic shadow government all by itself, but it's more of a part of the deep state because it's, it's economic. From the Council on Foreign Relations came the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Do you see globalism happening here? You mentioned the world New, order, New World Order and everybody freaks out. It's a conspiracy theory. And you will just set that aside because there is a global ec economic or or order with these going on right now outside of our Constitution running American economics now. You want to call it the New World Order? You want to call it the globalist order? You want to call it what Susan Rice and Barack Obama called it, the new international world order. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but this global order exists, and it is running our country. More on that coming up. Now, I tried my level best to distill all this, these volumes of things down to try to make it simple how this happened. The global banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, um, way, 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 way back with Cecil Rhodes going all the way back to South Africa, planned in, uh, started secret societies because they wanted a global economic world order. <clears throat> in other words, they wanted economic rulership of the world because that way they'd bring world peace and there'd no longer be national uh, division. The odd thing is the majority of them were engaged in the occult. Some of them very deeply engaged in the occult. And that thread followed these rich families all the way through and still does today. Um, just an interesting side fact. Guess who created the Federal Reserve? The global financial bankers had a secret meeting at Jekyll Island. We've been there. We stayed there. That's where they created the Federal Reserve. They deceptively worded it in a bill so it got by Congress. Congress passed it, not even realizing what they just did. And the Federal Reserve essentially took over the U.S. economy. 
It is and has global financial control of the entire U.S. economy right now. The Federal Reserve does. I'm going to get into that in detail because I have to, because it's so important. Guess who created the Council on Foreign Relations? The Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, especially the, the Morgan-Rothschild connection. They created the Council on Foreign Relations. It was not created by Congress. It was not created by vote. It was not created by the American people. It was created by the global bankers. What they did was they took global control over all of, of the U.S. economy, and the, the Council on the Foreign Relations did and still does controls our foreign policy. So the Federal Reserve controls our finances. The Council on Foreign Relations controls all of our foreign policy and our foreign wars. Now, still does, through the Department of State. They, they eventually were uh, responsible for the creation of the MIC, the Military Industrial Complex. And the CFR, from its very beginning, established a mechanism to control, guess what? The news media, going way back to 1921, up to 1976 which mocking, with Mockingbird and beyond. This is propaganda that goes out to get the, the American public to support wars like Iraq, Syria, and, and all these other things where they send these talking heads out to the, to the news networks to get popular support for these wars without a vote from the American people. The CFR created the Central Intelligence Agency, which as a, as a recovering CIA officer I'm going to be talking about in great detail at some risk, but you know, it's a dirty job as they say. Someone's got to do it. That came right out of the Council on Foreign, Lation, Foreign Relations, and most of the members of the CFR became directors and members of the CIA. And you'll see this thread go all the way down through history up until today where it's, it's getting worse. So they began the covert action program. The CIA's covert action program is un unconstitutional and it's illegal <clears throat> and it should not exist. And I'll go into the bloody things that have happened as a result of that down through the years. Out of that came the creation of the secret intelligence budget. Congress doesn't know about it. We don't know about it. Billions of dollars are spent, foreign wars, coups, overturning governments. None of us have a say in that. Congress doesn't even know how much they're spending. Now, I've been at the other end of the secret budget, <clears throat> and I have to be careful, but I can tell you um, that money doesn't always go for ethical things. Let's just put it that way, okay? But it's a secret budget. Out of that came the secret intelligence agencies and the surveillance state that we have right now. We are in, I think it was John Whitehead called it, uh, we're in an electronic concentration camp. We are surveilled, spied, monitored on from space, through our cell phones, smart TVs, it's all around us. We, uh, we have no privacy. Privacy is dead. Constitutional privacy, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, is, is gone. December 22nd, 19, 1913, I call that the year that the Constitution died. That was a year that they created the Federal Reserve Act. And the Federal Reserve came to life and took control of the American economy away from Congress and away from the American people and that was the end of our Constitution right there. Then there was a second death in 1947 with the National Security Act of 1947 and the creation of the CIA as a covert branch of government that does pretty much what it wants to do when it wants to do it outside of the Constitution. So it died a second time in 1947. So that far back, folks, we lost our Constitution that far back. Now, inside the government, any, any of you that know anything about the CIA, the NSA, or any of the intelligence agencies, their charter is you're only supposed to have a foreign mission, right? You're not supposed to spy on American citizens. That used to be against the law until 9-11 happened. Now, I want to stress, the NSA's domestic surveillance program that was spying on all of us, our computers, our cell phones, our internet traffic, our smart TVs, and on and on and on, it's collecting 1.5 billion pieces of information, not on terrorists, but on us a day through the NSA surveillance program. The NSA surveillance program, program was going on before 9-11. Everybody says, and it, it amplified, but that the NSA domestic surveillance program was as a result of 9-11. Of no, it was going on before 9-11 happened, just so you know. Uh, that's just an excuse. But now inside the United States, this is, this is the size of the shadow government that we now have functioning inside the United States through fusion centers watching us. There are 10,000 secret sites of the shadow government within the United States of America across the country. 10,000 secret sites inside the United States, not in a foreign country, inside the U.S. 1,271 secret agencies now are involved inside the U.S. with secrecy. 1,931 big 
Private corporations are now involved in government secrecy inside the U.S. I think it was Dana, Dana, Dana Priest and William Arkin did a tremendous piece of journalism on this, and I hope they got a Pulitzer Prize. I don't know if they did, but man, did they come up with a, with a tremendous uh, study on this. 4,800,000 people that we know of hold government security clearances and have signed the government secrecy agreement and will never be able to talk about what they've done. Okay? 4.8 million, uh, that we know of. It's more than that. 854,000 people they found out on paper through a really fascinating search. 854,000 people have top secret government clearances, the next level up. You can't even breathe what you're doing to anybody or you're behind bars for 20 years. So that, that number of people, and again, uh, I would call this a, cons a conservative estimate <laughs> based on, on my background. Inside the United States, millions of Americans through the deep state, the shadow government, and their associated contractors have signed government secrecy oaths or secrecy agreements. Millions of Americans inside the United States are bound by the secrecy oath. And uh, as I said, I'm recovering. I executed thousands of those uh, myself. So I know what they are, and I know what they can do. And then uh, they put a friend of mine, John Kiriakow, who exposed the torture program, they put him in jail for two years for a, a simple mistake. So um, inside the United States of America, people, not outside, not in a foreign country, bound by the secrecy agreement, I will get into this in some detail. Those of you from Waycross, Georgia, or nearby, uh, we talked about Waycross, I think, in, in the lecture I gave there. Uh, the, the state secrets privilege, the most tyrannical power of the U.S. government, actually was created with a crash in Waycross, Georgia, and we'll talk about that later. The CIA and the NSA can shut down any case against it that it does not like using the state secrets privilege. Shut it down, seal the evidence, and not even Congress can get access to it ever. Just stop it, just like that. Ironically, the wording of the state secrets privilege was derived from the monarchy of the King of England, his executive privilege. They actually took the wording from the very province we were supposed to rebel against and used it to create the state secret, secret privilege to silence Americans from talking about anything that the shadow government does. Now, the military industrial congressional complex, I like to stick that back in there, uh, and you'll see why. It's going to make you mad when you see what this, the influence this has over congressmen and senators. Here it is. The Congressional Armed Services Committee has 48 senior members, acting senior members, and they vote on the Defense Authorization Act. They just voted the act again, act increased it. They vote on the Defense Authorization Act, and they decide which of the major military industrial corporations get the money. Lockheed Martin, one of the big dogs on the block. They do surveillance on us on, on, for the U.S. government. Lockheed Martin holds the contract to monitor everything that we do with the International Re Revenue Service. All of your paper correspondence, your telephone calls, and anything you do with the IRS is monitored by Lockheed Martin on, on the part of the, the, the MIC, the military industrial complex. General Dynamics, a big one. Bom bombs, planes, and missiles. That's what these people do. Do you think that their motivation is peace? Or do you think their motivation is war and let's keep cranking this stuff out because we've got to get more contracts? That's the system. North of Grumman, Raytheon, Boeing, and of course, this is where uh, Booz Allen and Hamilton, Edward Snowden, uh, he came out of them. We'll talk a little bit more about that later with Booz. Booz goes way back. This in the military industrial complex, one trillion, one trillion with a T, annual spending for defense related purposes. And guess who the biggest arms dealer in the world is? us, the United States government. I wish I could say I used to be involved in that, but I can't. <laughs> um, 46 billion a year in foreign arms sales to governments like Pakistan that hate us, and Saudi Arabia, whose basic doctrine is the elimination of the West. And we're getting this kind of money to these people. Now, I want you to look at these, these congressmen and senators. These military industrial contractors give an average of $700,000 a year in contributions to these congressmen and senators' re-election campaigns and their leadership uh, PACs, uh, political action uh, committees. $700,000 a year come out of these, these companies into these congressmen and senators. One of the most uh, prominent ones is, is this fellow, John McCain. Personally, humbly, I call him the shadow senator. He is so deeply tied into the shadow government, the deep state, it's almost nauseating. He gets... 
$694,508 a year into his pocket for supporting war, <laughs> arms, bullets, and bombs, and the military-industrial complex. War's big business for old John. That's why we saw his picture with Al-Qaeda members over in, in Syria, smiling. And it turns out one of them was Al-Qaeda and the other was an ISIS leader. Uh, that's what happens when you get into greed and, and power without even knowing it. Maybe you wind up with the wrong crowd. So can you see where the influence is on our elected officials? This is just one fragment of the iceberg here. Uh, they tell us one thing. We're going to improve your financial life and your, your peace and security. Then they go to Washington and they do something exactly the opposite. They vote for covert wars, bloody conflicts in Syria, where we have been responsible for over 500,000 deaths now in Syria. The place is just blown to bits by the moderate Free Syrian Army. The Free Syrian Army went into a Christian village, and the Islamic U.S.-supported FC Free Syrian Army massacred an, an entire village of Christians that were protected by the Assad regime. But see that? Do you hear that in the media anywhere? No, of course not. No. The deep state and the shadow government, they want these wars to happen. More on that later. So you can see the problem. Now, what most people don't know exists, and this, I think, is where Drudge picked this up in Zero Hedge, is this, the secret intelligence industrial complex. Most people aren't even aware it's out there. Why? Because it's secret. It's the shadow government. I want you to see the massive size of this. It's consisted of the CIA, the NSA, the NGA, and the NRO, which I already talked about. These are the big dog companies, Lido's Holdings, multi-billion dollar company. CSRA, CA, the CACI, these folks are responsible for the torture program, which was only waterboarding, not much more than that. You've got SAIC. SEIC had a contract with NSA. Um, it was the Trailblazer program, which was the domestic surveillance program. Turns out it was an abject failure in its first iteration. And SEIC uh, messed up the, Congress, the, the, the contract and cost seven, they lost seven billion dollars. The whole thing failed. Do you think SEIC received any discipline from that? No. They're still right in there with the government getting big contracts. They just walked right through it unscathed. That's how, that's how the uh, shadow government works. Booz Allen Hamilton has been working for the intelligence community for so long, it goes all the way back. They helped establish the intelligence agency system in Egypt, going way back then. That's how big Booz Allen Hamilton was. This is where Ed, Edward Snowden came out, came out of Booz uh, and blew the whistle. I can tell you this. Uh, Edward Snowden, by his own admission, had watched the Thomas Drake case. Thomas Drake came out and blew the whistle on the NSA surveillance program. What did they do? They arrested him at gunpoint with an FBI SWAT team and charged him with espionage for trying to reveal that the government was spying on American people. Edward Snowden saw that happen to Thomas Drake and, that, and did what he did. Now, do you think if Snowden had stuck around and tried to go through the system, he'd still be here? No, no. So he's right. They would have gotten rid of him in some pretty creative ways. But it was the Thomas Drake case at Booz Allen Hamilton, or, or the, uh, yeah, the Thomas Drake, Drake case in NSA, and NSA got him to do that. Now look at this. $50 billion annually of our tax revenue is spent by the secret intelligence industrial complex. $50 billion. Did anybody know that their tax dollars were going to that? Anybody vote for that? Anybody even know about that? No. That's a lot of money. Well, how about this? These are top secret, unelected, unreported companies that do work that the American people are completely unaware of. And some of it is pretty uh, nefarious, for lack of a better term. I used, I, I, I used to be there. Some of it is flat out unconstitutional. Some of it is illegal. There should, people should be in jail, some of them. They have no accountability to Congress, no accountability to the, the American people, and no constitutional accountability whatsoever. Now, what do you think will happen to any sort of group of organizations if they are in secrecy and have no accountability? What do you think is going to happen? Just like the Founding Fathers said, they're going to go bad every single time. Secrecy breeds corruption. It does. So we've got the secret intelligence industrial complex hidden behind the scenes that nobody knows about, at least until now. So this is the size of the massive secrecy complex that we have that's being paid for with our tax dollars. You've got the CIA, my former home, that has grown into a huge organization from what it used to be. You've got the National Security Agency. You've got uh, the National Geospatial, Geospatial Agency and uh, an overhead picture of the National Reconnaissance Office. Massive, massive organizations. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans inside the United States bound by secrecy oaths. Okay? So, basically, 
it's established a global digital surveillance order. And most of our allies are a little upset at this. We're not just spying on us, we're spying on everyone. The NSA has got connections, global connections all over the world. So we've got a global digital surveillance network. I want you to look at this because this slide is, at least in my humble view, is upsetting. Uh, I went in and I did some research to find out what the, the, the cost, the actual cost in tax dollars of the shadow government and the deep state. How much of our tax money are they spending on these things? Well, let's look at it. 50 billion annually is the total intelligence budget, tax revenue. 598 billion is the total defense budget. 150 billion is the cost of overseas military bases, many of which are no longer needed. 5.9 billion military aid to foreign countries like Pakistan. As I mentioned earlier, people who hate us, we give them millions a year uh, out of the shadow, out shadow government funds. Four billion, I mentioned this earlier, is about what's spent from congressional, uh, on lobbying Congress on behalf of, of uh, Lido's Holdings and others. About uh, four billion annually is spent just on lobbying Congress alone. Now, let's look at us. Let's look at, that's, that's 803 billion in tax revenue that's spent, I understand, from other sources, it's more like a trillion dollars is spent a year on the deep state and shadow government complexes. About a trillion a year is probably a better figure. I just broke this down specifically from what I could dig out, but it's about, it's about a trillion is what they're spending of our tax dollars. Anybody vote for that? I know I didn't. Anybody know about that? <laughs> yeah. Now look at this. What's the cost to Americans' vital security? Does not the Constitution say that government's function is to protect the safety and security of Americans and, and serve the people. Isn't that the whole idea? Well, this is what's, what's happening to Americans. Social Security has been stolen. They've taken all the money out of Social, social Security and spent it on this stuff. It's now in the red. And this, this is not an, they try to call it an entitlement program. I don't know about you all, but I put hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month into Social Security so it would be a retirement someday. And they took it completely and they spent it on this. How about this? Medicare. I mean, people are suffering. People are, you know, another entitlement program. We've got to cut this back because we've got such, such a, we have, we have a budget deficit. I'll tell you where you can cut it back. You can cut it back right here. But they're not touching that. They're expanding that. How about this? Medicaid. They're defunding Medicaid. It's, a, it's another entitlement program. There are people in the United States who are poor and they need help. And the government is supposed to be helping them. Oh, you want to? You want socialism. Did I say that? <laughs> you, know, you, you want to take care of American safety and security and then they brand you as a socialist? No. I'm a constitutionist. Hello. How about this one? Healthcare. Took decades for them to come up with a healthcare program while Americans went bankrupt, suffered, and especially the aged, they died without insurance. Uh, shame on the Republicans. I was a Republican for 20 years. Shame, shame on the Republicans for never doing anything about that. Now, when the Democrats did, they brought in the big government and just made it worse. Welcome to government. Welcome to both parties. But now they're working out a health care program. The initial one was, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of Obamacare. We'll come up with another health care program, but we're not going to cover any pre-existing conditions or we're going to make it really expensive. You could probably nudge somebody next to you and, and you got a pre-existing condition. You know, pro pro most of our friends have pre-existing conditions. That's probably over half the population have pre-existing conditions. I mean, come on, please. Anybody over 50 probably has a pre-existing condition, okay? Uh, infrastructure is crumbling. Uh, unemployment is twice what the government reports it is. Americans are suffering, and, how could, and there's actually po poverty in the United States. How can this be when we're spending this amount of money on stuff that we don't even know about and we're not even voting for? I mean, that's an outrage. Uh, people are starting to not just get educated on that, but they're starting to get upset, and that's where things start to change. When people get upset enough to, to take action, now we're getting somewhere. Okay? All right. Uh, I want to talk about this one um, at, at maybe some personal risk. I, I, can, I consider the CIA as the central node of the shadow government because of its unbridled, unconstitutional power, which it has. Unbelievable amount of power with no congressional oversight. They say there is, but there ain't at all. It, it manipulates the other intelligence branches. The director of national security was supposed to stop that. I can tell you he doesn't. The CIA still is manipulating these people, these agencies. It controls multiple defense intelligence corporations, which I've talked about. 
It manipulates the president and his political decisions. Remember false intelligence that led us into Iraq? and the death of 500,000 Iraqi citizens and 5,000 troops and 200,000 American troops that were injured on top of that based on false intelligence which most of us are convinced was intentional. Power to start wars, torture, drones, they've conducted 80 coups overseas, multiple false flags, false terrorist attacks in Italy conducted by the CIA to make it look like the Italian government did it, killed 491 innocent people. It was a CIA false op made to look like a terrorist attack. Google it. It's in the history books. They did it. I have a friend, Paul Williams, I'll put a plug in, he wrote a book called uh, Operation Gladio, The Unholy Alliance, uh, the connection between the, uh, the CIA, the mafia, and the Vatican. The CIA used the mafia to run drugs, and they laundered the money through the Vatican. Uh, Paul's book, I endorsed it. I wasn't until I read it. He's got 2,000 documented footnotes in that book that proves that that happened, that the CIA was running drugs, laundering the money through the Vatican, to stage false terrorist attacks in Italy. They were doing it. It's documented. And it gets worse. These are unelected officials that make these massive, huge decisions. It manipulates Congress with secrecy. I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate Congress with impunity by the power of secrecy. And I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate the judiciary with the state secret privilege, shutting cases down, forcing them to shut cases down, and Surprisingly, their budget was, is secret because if anybody knew what they're spending this money on, there would be no CIA. I can tell you that right now. It would be gone. But see, that's what secrecy does. It hides dark activity. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. It has been calculated, I think pretty accurately, that because of CIA operations and coups, about 7 million people have died as a result of CIA covert operations largely innocent people. Places like Chile, where they supported Augusto Pinochet and the death squads cost the lives of 46,000 men, women, and children. Some of the, some of the ladies were pregnant, and 200,000 Chileans disappeared. They don't know where they went. That was a CIA-supported coup, and they actually paid some of Pinochet's uh, death squads uh, with our tax dollars. It kind of makes you, it upsets you a little bit. All right. This is a quote, I have this in my book from Harry Truman. Harry Truman reluctantly created the Central Intelligence Agency. He said this afterwards, I think it was two years later. There's something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow on our historic position of freedom, and I think we need to correct it. Later he called it a sinister and mysterious agency, and then said he regretted ever forming it in the first place. That was only two years after its creation. It had gone rogue already. Well, and I'll show you some of that uh, in, in a bit. Interesting enough, remember I mentioned the Council on Foreign Relations and its connection to the mainstream media, specifically the Washington Post? Uh, still the Washington Post, in my humble view. Amazon just entered into a $600 million contract with guess who? The CIA. Who does Amazon own? The Washington Post. What a coincidence. Uh, nothing ever changes. This is a cycle. This is a system. Anyway, this was published in the Washington Post. Everybody freaked out, and then it was deleted three days later and never published again. The Post pulled it. Somebody happened to grab it before they were able to do that. All right. What is going on in Washington, D.C. right now? Does it appear like there's a war, maybe, of some kind happening? It's like, you know, when there's a thunderstorm, when the cold air hits the hot air, boom, there's a thunderstorm. You've got the shadow government hitting this out-of-the-box guy, Donald Trump, who's not a part of, by, uh, I think it was Newt Gingrich said, He's not a part of any of the secret societies. You've got the shadow government and the CIA and Donald Trump. Whatever you think of Donald Trump is irrelevant. They're colliding. And there is a thunderstorm. In, I, in all my 20 years of government, I never saw anything even remotely close to this. So there's an internal Cold War. The shadow government versus the elected government. The C Remember what the, some of the things Donald Trump said before the election? He's going to go on and, and investigate the CIA and some of their past activities. He's going to look at the JFK assassination. He wasn't so convinced that 9-11 was above board. He wanted to look into the NSA domestic spying program. All these things he was saying before he was elected. And, of course, everybody's like, he'll never get in. Hey, go ahead, blow your smoke. Then he gets elected. And the shadow government is like, Homer Simpson, don't. Oh, my. What are, we, what are we going to do? I mean, they're, they're freaking out, literally. And, and you can see that coming out in the press. This is the size of the shadow government, huge complex of secrecy, surveillance, and covert programs, the size of 23 U.S. Capitol buildings, three Pentagons, and if you remember this, the CIA just recently, a couple years ago, spied on the U.S. Senate. They cracked into the Senate computers, 
surveilled them when they, they were writing, uh, Diane Feinstein and the Select Committee were writing the report on CIA torture program. Remember that? The CIA actually broke into the, C, into the Senate computers on Capitol Hill and accessed that report. That's a felony. That's, a, that, that's multiple felonies. Uh, was anybody charged for that? Was John Brennan indicted for doing that? Did he even get a slap on the wrist? No. Nothing happened. Now, President Obama, they said, uh, President Obama, what do you think about this? The, the CIA just hacked into the Senate on Capitol Hill. Now that, what are you going to do about this? He said, well, I have all full confidence in John Brennan was his response. But most people think, well, that was a political backup. No. The chilling thing is President Obama could do nothing about what the CIA was doing. Obama could do nothing about the fact that the CIA had cracked into the Senate. So he just said, I support John Brennan. And he, he, there's nothing he could do. He did not have the power to, to over, overturn or subvert the CIA. That's how bad this is. Okay? So what does John Brennan do when he's called before the Senate and put on the hot seat for bugging the U.S. Senate? What, this is what the CIA always does. He threatens them. Well, you had unauthorized access to CIA classified information on those computers, is what he said. And you, you know what the penalties of that are? Could be prison. So you, you're saying I spied on the Senate. Well, I'm telling you, you had unauthorized access to CIA documents, and you could go to prison for it. That was his comeback. And I know, because I was in there, that is their MO. They always do that. That's how the, the shadow government works. But that is actually what he did. He threatened the Senate with prosecution for accessing, accessing CIA shadow government documents. Outrageous. Secrecy, and I, I'd like everybody to remember this, secrecy outside constitutional uh, constraints, con corruption and failure are inevitable. Government itself is going to go bad every time. That's one of the genius things the Founding Fathers knew after all the research and history they looked at. Government will go bad every time. People in powerful positions of government will go bad every time. Secret government goes really bad <laughs> over time because there's no accountability. You take anybody with no scruples or ethics or some sort of uh, accountability, they're going to go bad. It's human nature. This is some of the, the corruption that's happened because of secrecy. Do you remember Pearl Harbor? Now, they said, we're creating the CIA because we don't want another Pearl Harbor. You've probably heard that before. Did you know that FDR had received hard intelligence that the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor before it happened? He removed the defensive ships from Pearl Harbor that could have stopped that attack held the in intelligence along with Winston Churchill and allowed that attack to happen. Now, if you don't believe that, I have an Intelligence Hour program where I, bought, where I brought uh, retired uh, Admiral Ace Lyons on, former commander of the Pacific Fleet, interviewed Ace on this, and he said, bullseye. That's exactly what FDR did. So we got this right out of the horse's mouth. So even the creation of the CIA is based on a fallacy. They could have prevented Pearl Harbor. 2,700 Americans, I think, uh, something like that, died in Pearl Harbor, and they went into a war that probably was unnecessary. I understand the Japanese, according to Ace, uh, Admiral Lyons, Japanese tried to surrender, I think, five times, and it was ignored, and they, and they pushed the war forward anyway. Uh, Pearl Harbor was a myth. Iran, the, the Iran we have now was started when the CIA, the Iranian government accepted by the people, it was, it was a peaceful government, uh, almost, almost an ally, but the Iran took control of all of the oil and gas pipelines in the country of Iran, which was a lot, and uh, took it away from the British and away from the Americans and nationalized the oil system in Iran. So the CIA, along with some of the U.S. corporations, said, no, 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 we cannot have the Iran having power over this oil. So the CIA went into Iran, staged a coup, got, got uh, riots in the streets, people were killed. That government was overthrown, and guess who replaced it? Ayatollah Khomeini and the creation of Hezbollah took its place. And now, what do we have now? The Iran and the nuclear deal was started with a CIA coup in the beginning over a government that was not trying to hurt anybody, started with a, with a, with a coup that removed a peaceful government to get the oil and the gas. Research it, it's there. And the CIA created the problem we have with Iran right now because of an illegal, unconstitutional operation. Afghanistan, we went into Afghanistan against the Soviets, remember that? Uh, that was back in my days. And, uh, we taught the Mujahideen radical Islamic cells. We taught them how to blow up cars, how to build bombs, how to shoot missiles, stingers, and the whole shebang. Taught them all that stuff. And after the Soviets pulled out, uh, do you think um, the Mujahideen stayed uh, faithful to the United States? 
No, that's not who they are. What happened? They created ISIS. and they, Well, originally they created Al-Qaeda, which morphed into ISIS. But out of Afghanistan, the Mujahideen, once the U.S. had pulled out, created Al-Qaeda, came back around, boom, and became our enemy. Started by a CIA operation. that back, in, in, in intelligence circles, we call that blowback. When you do an operation thinking that you're a real big dog and then it all goes wrong and comes back the exact opposite way, that's pretty much the history of the CIA if you read, read through some of these operations. Essentially, the CIA is responsible for the creation of Al-Qaeda. That is not an understatement. Okay? The fall of the Soviet Union. I was there. It was a complete surprise to the CIA. The CIA had, had, it was a, they had no idea the Soviet Union was about to fall. This is the, is the most powerful Intelligence agency of the world, the top of the evolutionary heap is what we th thought of ourselves, uh, the, above the little people. Uh, and when you get that kind of arrogant, narcissistic mindset, you start doing stupid things. So when the Soviet Union fell, the CIA was like, oh, do what just happened? They had no idea. They completely missed it. Iraq. The CIA, many people think it was intentional because they had a vendetta against Iraq, provided false intelligence to the President of the United States that led us to one of the worst military moves in United States history. Then we have Libya. We ran guns into Libya. We didn't like Muammar Gaddafi, although he was giving us intelligence on Al-Qaeda. He destroyed his weapons of mass destruction. He told us, hey, if you want to take over Libya, I'll move into a safe haven country. If you want, I'll get out of there. I'll do any anything you want. But Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I'm not making a political statement, they, they committed what was a de facto assassination, and they pushed for his murder anyway to overturn that government, which is now in the hands of radical Islamists, largely Al-Qaeda and Al-Fuqa and others have taken control of Libya and it is an absolute mess and we've lost total control and it is now connected to ISIS and the Free Syrian Army up in Syria. Another mess. 9-11. Don't have time to go off on this one, but I can tell you this, the CIA had direct information before 9-11 uh, of the alleged hijackers because they were assets. They knew who they were, but they refused to provide the information to the FBI. After 9-11 happened, they were the only federal agency to refuse to provide any information about what the CIA knew before the attack. Just flat out refused. Said, nope, not going to do it. It's classified. And 9-11, the 9-11 Commission was never able to put that in the report. Uh, we could spend a few hours on that one. There have been massive intelligence failures within the CIA. You, you would laugh if, if, you, if you knew what they were. Massive intelligence failures that people will never know about because uh, they're secret. If they did know about them, the place wouldn't exist. Uh, so there's a lot of failures that people don't know about because it's a classified complex. So corruption and failure are in inevitable whenever there is a secret form of government. It is the nature of the beast. Not an understatement. Blood on its roots. When you have an organization whose roots are dark from the beginning over history, the roots usually supply the life to the tree and then eventually the fruit. And I just want to make this point. The CIA's past, human rights violations in Chile, 80 bloody coups, torture, rendition, and secret prisons were happening in the first four years of the CIA. Does that sound familiar? It just happened again, didn't they? Same root, same fruit. False flag terrorist attacks in Italy and more. Assassinations with impunity. Operation Phoenix in Vietnam. They killed, assassinated 26,000 people. The press never reported on because they were suspected of being connected, civilians, connected to the, the Vietnamese. A huge assassination program called Operation Phoenix. Collaborating with the enemy, Alan Dulles and the CIA secretly moved Nazi war criminals into the United States with false papers and made them scientists within, this, within the CIA working on behalf of the American government. High level uh, Nazi war criminals. Alan Dulles actually worked with top, the, the CIA director, worked with top Nazi officials. Overthrowing democratic governments, which they've done many times, politically motivated intelligence leaks. Now, this is, this is the past. This is the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Does any of this look familiar today? <laughs> blood on the fruit, on the root, blood on the fruit. Same organization, hasn't changed at all. And we all know about the whole nother day here, some of you know, MK Ultra Mind Control Program, nasty, disgusting stuff. I know one of the uh, ladies whose dad was one of the CIA attorneys at the time MK Ultra was, was being exposed, and he could not stomach what was happening there. She'd drive into work every day, and he was just uh, incensed by what MK Ultra was doing. Are they still doing it? Well, uh, I'll let you decide about that one. <laughs> 
Uh, Operation Paperclip, moving Nazi criminals in. Operation Mockingbird, seeding stories into the mainstream media and the press. Uh, they allegedly stopped that in 1976. No, they didn't. They, the wording is, uh, they can't pay journalists anymore, but now it's voluntary. So, okay, so Mockingbird still exists then. If it's voluntary, and the CI has ways of making people volunteer to provide information. I know that personally when I tried to put, put my book out. All right, and Operation Gladio, uh, I really recommend the book, Operation Gladio, false, uh, false terrorist attacks, killed people, made it look like terrorists did it. I want to stress this. The CIA as the central node of the shadow government, just remember that, because I'm going to call for, at the end of this lecture, um, for the dismantling and the res rescinding the National Security Act of 1947, which gave the CIA uh, authority for covert operations. That should be rescinded because of the things that they have done. But the CIA was cr created through the National Security Act of 1947, which states that the CIA is accountable only to the president through the National Security Council if the president knows about it. Truman later regretted it. And this is the wording. This is the wording that created CIA covert operations. Covert operations are mentioned nowhere, giving the CIA the power to do that. Nowhere. This is what it says. Allows the CIA to, quote, perform such other functions and duties as the National Security Council may from time to time direct. Now, do you hear... Uh, covert operations, bloody coups, uh, supporting terror cells. Do you hear any of that in there? That's because there's no definition of what the CIA's power was. And there was no restriction on what the CIA could do with this secret budget. Absolutely out of control. I remember when I was in there, it's like, oh my gosh. Absolutely out of control. Created without congressional approval. Congress had nothing to do with the creation of the CIA. As a matter of fact, goodness, the Department of State, the FBI, uh, much of Congress were completely against the CIA because they were afraid it was going to be another Nazi Secret Service kind of organization. That's the way they put it. They were afraid it was going to be a, a national police, secret police, was their, was their fear. Truman did it anyway uh, and later regretted it, but it was created without Congress. Now, who represents the people? Who, who, who's the only people we have that represent us? It's Congress, right? Constitutionally, Congress is the constitutional voice of the people who run the government, right? The CIA was, cre was created without any of that, outside the Constitution completely. This, its original form, Foggy Bottom down in Washington, was a single building. What Truman wanted, with, which we should have gotten, was an objective intelligence agency that collected intelligence and provided it to the president uh, for policymaking. There's nothing wrong with that. It was the covert operations part that went bad. So originally Truman wanted a bunch of intelligence analysts collecting information both from the field and, and providing him with foreign intelligence to make decisions. Nothing wrong with that at all. The only problem is, is the covert action side. It got out of control. This is the size of it today. That's my former home where I used to live. It's massive. Covert operations are massive, largely unknown, their size and scope and the amount of money that's paid for these things. In comes this out-of-the-box fella by the name of, name of Donald Trump. Donald Trump challenges the NSA and the CIA even before he got in office, if any of you remember that. And Senator Chuck Schumer, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, comes out and says this, very chilling. If you cross the intelligence community, they, the CIA and the NSA, have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying, Mr. President, if you cross the CIA, they're going to get you. That's what he's saying. I heard that. My wife and I, we stopped. We're like, what? Of course, from my background, I was like, duh. <laughs> but but that, that's what he's saying. The only time in history we have ever heard that kind of thing before was Alan Dulles and John F. Kennedy. Alan Dulles, director of the CIA, John F. Kennedy, said he's going to shatter, shatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. The only time before where the shadow government has come against an elected president was JFK. Uh, that's why we're seeing the war uh, that, we, that we're seeing in Washington. And I'm going to get into the Russian dossier here in a little bit, and you're going to find out that essentially is a shadow government operation, and I'll show you why. Whatever your opinion of Donald Trump, the shadow government fears being exposed. That's the thunderstorm that's happening in Washington. That's what's going on. They want him gone, terminated. And they're doing a character assassination right now on him and his kids and his business partners. They just indicted uh, Paul Manafort. You've, you all have heard that? Do you know that Paul Manafort, they, you know what they indicted him for? Colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group which was a Hillary Clinton, that's her former campaign manager. So he's not indicted for colluding with, with the Russians for Trump, they just indicted him for colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Did you hear that anywhere in the mainstream media? Yeah, 
Yeah, it is absolute collusion, but uh, oops, it's on the wrong side. But they're making it look like Manafort has just been indicted because of his connections to Donald Trump. That's not it at all. It's a lie. So, shadow government operations, the dossier. Let's talk about this. You, you've heard of the dossier out there. Oh, my gosh. The golden shower in Moscow. And as disgusting as it gets, if you go through the, all of the facts and the dossier and you boil them down and distill them, which I did ad nauseum, this is what you get. Russian intelligence supplied false information and interfered with the presidential election and uh, fusion GPS and uh, Mr. Steele, a former British intelligence officer, if there is such a thing, paid senior Russian security officers to provide the information on Donald Trump. They got the information from senior Russian intelligence officers in Moscow. That's kind of collusion there, isn't it? But it was to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, not to eliminate him. So they went to, to Russian intelligence. Now, I, I was a CIA, CIA officer, and I was up against Russian intelligence, sometimes closely. <laughs> you, can, you think you can trust Russian intelligence to give you honest information when you're their espionage enemy? I mean, duh, you know, that's espionage 101. But that's what they did. Then the CIA, John Brennan, labeled it as intelligence, classified it just out of the blue, and leaked it to the news media. The CIA director leaked the contents of the dossier, calling it intelligence, to the news media to make it look like Trump had colluded with the Russians and these prostitutes doing golden showers on Barack Obama's hotel bed or, or uh, such and such. So the CIA labeled it intelligence, leaked it to the news media. Uh, Mockingbird, anyone? Uh, intelligence leaking information to the press against the president? Anybody? Yeah. It was the basis for the FBI getting the warrants to do NSA surveillance on the Trump campaign team. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Powers, the UN ambassador, uh, Susan Powers, I think her first name is Susan, she unmasked 260 names of Americans, uh, Samantha Powers. Samantha Powers used this in the NSA to unmask the identities of 260 Americans. What in the world is the UN ambassador using the NSA to unmask the names of US citizens for? But this is how the FBI got those surveillance warrants was from the dossier information. So the FBI used information from Russian intelligence to get an NSA FISA approval to spy on Donald Trump and his cabinet. I'll just let that sit there for a couple of seconds. That's what happened. And we talked about uh, the UN ambassador on mass 260 names. So information used as the basis for the, for the current special prosecutor, once again, the dossier started the ball rolling for the selection of Robert Mueller as the special prosecutor investigating Trump collusion. Remember we talked about Mueller's connection to the, to the deep state shadow government. I, I'm convinced and there's more there with, with Mr. Mueller and Comey for that matter. But uh, the information was used as the basin, basis now for Robert Mueller, the current special prosecutor. Information from Russian intelligence. I, mean, if, I was in counterintelligence in the sea. I'd be rolling over. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if this is happening. I mean, this is, a, this is the top government almost committing espionage with Soviet intelligence. I mean, really, it's that, it's that bad. The FBI even paid this former British spy for information until Christopher Steele's identity was revealed, and then they, they stopped paying, and they're like, oh, oh, they pulled the payments back. The FBI was actually paying this guy to connect to the Russians and get this information. Robert Mueller. And the dossier was originally obtained by, guess who, the man that I love so much, the shadow senator, uh, John McCain. Um, he, he sent an emissary over to uh, pick up the dossier from Mr. Steele, brought it back, gave it to the CIA and the FBI, and initiated the investigation, Senator John McCain. And as a former intelligence, I've written a lots of intelligence report from some of the stuff I got, some of the stuff that was coming in. Uh, this thing is, I, I've read it, it's poorly written, there's false information, the grammars, is, there's misspelling, the grammar's even bad in this thing. When you're an intelligence officer and you write a report, you get one word mis misspelled, and they kick your pancake maker all the way down the stairs, just for one error. And this thing looks like it's written by a high school kid almost. What the heck? <laughs> uh, it's, I think they put it together so quickly they didn't bother to, to write it properly because they wanted that sucker out there to get this guy Trump, you know? I mean, really. <clears throat> So here it is. Let me just sum this up. As a foreign intelligence officer, as I sifted through this, this is what I came up with. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Sorry, but I just got to laugh. It's almost funny. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Then they disseminated, to, disseminated that information from Russian intelligence to the CIA and the FBI. 
Then the CIA leaked it to the press from Russian intelligence. Then the FBI used that for their FISA to do the NSA surveillance on Trump's campaign team. Now, this is all facts. You can go out and verify all of this, all of it. This is just facts by fact by fact. And which eventually led to the special pro prosecutor, Robert Mueller, of 9-11 warrantless wire, wire search lying to Congress four times fame. We could just stop right here and go home and maybe get a Big Mac on the way and then be all be over. <laughs> but that's a, I wish I could say it didn't get worse. Uh, but uh, people need to understand that is a shadow government in my humble, meek and mild view. That's a shadow government operation against a sitting president about as obvious as you can get. Not the Russians trying to get Donald Trump elected, the Russians getting paid to provide information to keep him from being elected. Okay, so what does evil look like in the government? What's the face of evil look like? It's a dark hooded figure hidden away in a smoky room doing nasty things on a computer or a covert operation. What, is, what does the face of evil look like in the creation of the CIA? Mind control experiments on unwitting human subjects with MK Ultra, sex abuse, uh, drugging Americans and Canadians without their knowledge. I think they were trying to, to do split personalities through sexual abuse and other things and some kinds of torture to see if they could split a, a person's personality, turn them into a, a warrior type. Uh, mind control experiments, secret enhanced interrogation and murder. Enhanced interrogation, have we ever heard that lately? This is going on back under, under this guy in the, in the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Black site detention and rendition. Does that sound familiar? Has that happened recently? Remember, blood on, on the roots, blood on the fruits. Uh, this was done back at, about five to 10 years after the CIA's creation. Did we just not see this a few years ago again? Torture, verbal, sexual abuse. Collaborating with Hitler's Third Reich. Smuggling Nazi war criminals out of Germany. Overthrowing democratically elected governments. Huge assassination programs. Spying on U.S. citizens. Have you seen that lately? Politically motivated intelligence leaks. I think I just showed you one of those. That happened when the CIA was formed. They're doing the same thing. They haven't changed who they are at all. Conspired against the President of the United States. Alan Dulles formed a secret cabal of former high-level CIA officers to try to undermine every policy that JFK was doing. They worked against him at every turn to try to stop him. Um, after JFK was assassinated, guess who they put in charge of the Warren Commission to run it? Alan Dulles, uh, Kennedy's arch enemy, who was arrayed against him, and he coerced the witnesses and what inf information the CIA provided. I'm just saying. Uh, it's a historical fact. So what, is, what does this person look like, this evil, dark, hooded figure, someone that would do these horrible things? Well, this is what he looks like. Nice pipe smoking Harvard kind of guy. If you met him at a party, you'd think, hey, you know, that's a real educated, upstanding man. Alan Dulles, the director of the CIA, did all this, he and Richard Helms. So you can't go by what the person looks like. You got to go by what they, what they do, and you got to go by the, the character of the organization that uh, they're running. We have been, the U.S. has been sleeping with the devil since 1947 and the creation of the CIA. Murders, killing, and beyond that the CIA has done with our tax dollars, our government has been sleeping with the devil since the National Security Act of 1947. We all got this when we got in there. I used to be a briefer. We used to tell people, uh, you know how you got in here in the CIA? You're the cream of the crop. You're the top of the evolutionary chain, intellectual chain. Do you realize that, and I can't say the exact figure, but 300,000 people apply with this agency a year, and only 2% get in. That's you. That means you're smarter than the little people down there. You're special, and their heads swell, and narcissists, which there are a lot of, they love that stuff. Their head just swells way up. You're like James Bond, you know? You're, that's what you are now. You're James Bond. Well, the only problem with that is, did James Bond ever do these things? Drone wedding parties. I think, I think the drone program has droned to date eight wedding parties and killed everybody in the wedding party going after the one suspected terrorist. They can now drone wedding parties not based on hard intelligence, but just suspected that the person, because of their behavior, only may be involved in terrorism. They can hit him with a drone. Eight wedding par parties have been wiped out. Torture and kill prisoners. James Bond ever do that? Spy on his own government. Did he ever do that? Ma'am? I think her name was Ma'am. Did he ever spy on Ma'am? Or I forget the, his boss's name, a lady. Um, did he ever provide false intelligence leading to war? Pay trained human rights violators. Stage false terrorist attacks. Overthrow de democratically elected governments. Plant false stories in British newspapers. Create and support terrorism, leak intelligence for political influence.
conspired to destroy the Queen. Did James Bond ever do any, any of these things? CIA, you are no James Bond. Let's just get that straight right now. Did he ever run drugs for money? That's a whole other hour there. Um, it's pretty clear that the CIA got into the DEA and manipulated the, the DEA, and the CIA has been involved in drug running for years, Operation Gladio being one of those, with secret budgets. Obstruction of, of justice. Remember, violations of the U.S. Constitution are what? A felony, right? I mean, if we're under a, if people under the rule of law, constitutional law, it's a, it's a felony, at least it used to be. Obstruction of justice. Operation Paperclip. The CIA created false files on these Nazi war criminals, made them look like they had no connection to the Third Reich, and then presented them to Truman. Truman read through them and was like, okay, this guy wasn't involved with the Nazis, bring him over. They lied to the president, fabricated the intelligence, got these Nazi war criminals to do scientific experiments, probably MK Ultra related things, inside the United States. MK files, when it finally went before Congress, what did the CIA do? They destroyed the files before they went to testify. That's why, with the release of the JFK files, which never should have been classified in the first place, they should have been public source. But the big controversy about the release of the, J J release of the JFK files, with Trump doing that, I think is, is awesome. But do you think the CIA archived the files of the names of the assassins, if it did or did not use, do you think that they're going to archive that so it can be retrieved at a later date? I mean, that's laughable. They, did you, they did, in, in MK Ultra, did they say, well, yeah, this is illegal, unconstitutional, human rights violation, but we'll go ahead and start, store these files in archives in 30 years so people can see all the dastardly things we did. <laughs> did you think they did that with JFK? Absolutely not. Uh, that stuff will never see the light of day because it's, it no longer exists. The Warren Commission, the CIA controlled the documents, the witness tampering, because they put Alan Dulles, the CIA director, in charge of the Warren Commission. And he decided what CIA officers were going to testify, which ones weren't, and what documents were or were not going to be provided, which were few. Iran-Contra lied to Congress. Congress. The CIA lied to Con a felony, uh, destroyed all their files, all the Iran-Contra files, and were running drugs uh, to support the Contras. All, not just a violation of U.S. law, it's a violation of international law, obstruction of justice. The torture program destroyed all the tapes. Demanded, remember, demanded by the Senate, destroyed all the torture tapes, and then hacked into the computers on, on Senate on Capitol Hill to see what, what kind of goods they had on them. Obstruction of justice to the 10th power. I mean, how much more do you want? Uh, spied on the U.S. Senate, the CIA withheld the JFK documents. I talked about that. They had no right to do that. Uh, you will find out that most of that stuff it has nothing to do with classified operations or sources and methods or anything. That should have been released to the American people from day one, with some exceptions. There may have been a couple of sources, uh, which I strongly doubt. They may have wanted to protect, uh, but I strongly doubt that. One of the things the CIA has done, just so you know, is they uh, got passage of what is called the Covert Identities Protection Act. And what the Covert Identities Protection Act does is make it a felony up to 20 years in prison if you reveal the name of any CIA agent who was undercover or is now undercover by accident or intentionally. That's how they got John Kiriakow. He accidentally handed someone a business card not knowing that this guy used to be undercover. Of course, they were, trying, they were waiting for him. And that that's, was their excuse, was that statute. So the CIA can and is, I am sure, because I know them, they're going to say with JFK, well, covert, protection, covert Identities Protection Act, you know, we had covert officers involved back then, and I'm sorry, but the law says we can't reveal any of their names or what they're connected to. Case closed. See how they do it? That's the shadow government. That's the power of secrecy. Okay, more. Abuse of secrecy. Use of unwitting universities. In MK Ultra, they, they had unwitting universities, MIT and others, doing the CIA's mind control experiments, but not knowing they were doing it for the CIA. They thought they were doing noble stuff, and the whole time it was a CIA operation. They lied to the universities and had them conducting these experiments, not even knowing that they were doing it for the CIA, until later. Illegal coups and co covert operations. You talked about, about some of those with Congress. Conceal the activities before the 9-11 attacks. And after the 9-11 Commission issued its report for the American people and transparency, remember, that wasn't that the goal of the figure out what the heck happened? Well, they released it, but there's 28 pages still blacked out. Shadow government favorite. Blacked out 28 pages. Still, George W. Bush had them blacked out. Still blacked out today. 28 pages. That was, that was for the American people. Why are they blacking out 28 pages? I have my own ideas about that. I think Saudi intelligence was connected. 
Saudi intelligence is a close uh, ally of our intelligence. Um, and why is that blacked out? That's a people's document. When they black something out, you probably should be suspicious. Uh, still blacked out today. The CIA invoked the state's secret privilege to cover illegal operations. They've done that multiple times. I'll show you that uh, whenever there's a CIA operation that comes before Congress or somebody files suit because somebody has been killed or in injured, the CIA invokes the state's secret, secret privilege with impunity, shuts the case down, it's sealed from Congress, and it's gone forever. They've, I've seen it used personally. They've used it multiple times. It's the greatest tyranny that's ever happened in our government, my, in my view. They bla blacked out documents. Congress demands things, and they provide it, but it's all blacked out. I mean, it's meaningless, but they did their job. They I'll show you some examples. They did their job. They provided it. It's they're obstructing justice. So General Michael Hayden, director of the NSA and then director of the CIA. <laughs> Let's shake that one off. Uh, that's double trouble. This is what he said, and you know, I think maybe we ought to take this to heart. Maybe not. We obey the law. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, probably one of the biggest fibs ever told in, in the history of humankind. <laughs> just trust us. Don't look into us. Don't investigate. Just trust us. The National Security Agency is removing deeper into the, into the shadow government. Massive system of global surveillance. Remember the USA Freedom Act? The NSA is not spying on us anymore. Isn't that what they've told us? They're not, they're not hacking into Google and, and Yahoo and Microsoft and the rest of them without them knowing it anymore. No, no. They have to ask permission now. That's at the USA Freedom. I think it was Ron Paul that said, and he's right, <laughs> whenever the U.S. government says they reform something, you need to be suspicious. Because it usually gets worse. And that's the case here. Uh, all of the information connected from the NSA domestic surveillance program on us, 1.5 billion bits of information a year, our cell phone use, our computers, our telephones, our texts, our smart TVs, anything digital on us with impunity on all of us was collected. And it was stored in what's called the Utah Data Center. There's so much data there, they had to create a new name called Yodobytes. It is so huge. They went by Giga and Terra and all the rest, and they had nothing left. So they came up with Yodobytes. That's enough bits and bytes to fill the state of Delaware and uh, Rhode Island full of bits and bytes to fill the entire state. That's how much data is in the U Utah Data Center from all the collection on you, me, our neighbors, and everyone else. Huge, massive. They have exclusive authority on mass Americans. We've talked about that. The FISA court is a Supreme Court that secretly allows the, the uh, surveillance of U.S. citizens without the knowledge of Congress. They've got their own secret court, secret Supreme Court. And they've just been given new cybersecurity authority. So if there's any cybersecurity issues with any Americans, they can now spy on you. Is cybersecurity a huge thing that impacts all of us now? with viruses and Trojan horses and all this other stuff. So if it's a cybersecurity problem, they now can, can get into our stuff. So they just redid the authority under a different name. And I'll show you something else. This is the Black Chamber. The original NSA surveillance office was fine, created fine, uh, trying to gather information on, on our enemies during war. That's, that's perfectly fine, perfectly constitutional. But this is what it's grown to be. It's a global surveillance massive complex, massive. And I'll show you some things they did to, anybody heard of William Binney? NSA whistleblower, I'll we'll talk about him in a little bit. Um, good man. Uh, this is the Utah Data Center in Utah, storing yottabytes of information. This is where all of our information out in Utah in the NSA uh, Data Center is being stored on all of us. The information is so huge, the cooling systems for the computers are the size of a warehouse just to cool the computers down for information on us. Constitutional issue there, maybe? Yeah, maybe. And, of course, they're shielded by the state secrets privilege. Several people took the NSA to court over the NSA domestic spying program, wanted it to go to court under the Fourth Amendment. So what the NSA did was, yeah, sorry, state secrets privilege, case sealed, it's over. Uh, we have that authority. You'll never see it. Gone. Close the cases down. Just like that. They've got that power. So this is what the NSA has done recently. I don't know if you know about this or not. They have... Uh, Began a program called Traffic Shaping to get around the, the NSA Freedom, Freedom Act or the USA Freedom Act. You know what traffic shaping is? What they're doing is they're all the internet traffic that they're collecting on us, they're not storing it locally. The old stuff is still on the Utah Data Center forever, but the new stuff, they're not storing it in the United States anymore. They're storing it overseas. They're still collecting it on us, but they're storing it in overseas databases. It's called traffic shaping. Kind of a serpent like term, but they're shaping the traffic still collecting, but they're sending it overseas and still storing it. Arsenal of surveillance programs 
Lockheed Martin and other military industrial complexes are doing that on their behalf for multi-billion dollar contracts. And now they are starting to use the new voice print uh, technology, what is it, Alexa and the other things, and your cell phone. The NSA is now able to pick up your voice when you're talking, not just from your cell phone, from other things. And now on the database they have your voice, not just your data. This is an NSA dream come true. Uh, voice print technology, they've got our voices now, not just our data. Uh, chilling. We're, we're not just surveilled by the government now, we're surveilled by our own corporations that have multi-million dollar contracts with the government and are bound by secrecy oaths and can never talk about what they did. Even if they feel guilty after they retire, mm -mm. Think they want to go to prison? Risk their life, their finances? No, of course not. Nobody's, no one's going to talk. It's personal destruction. Corporate tracking and browsing, even Facebook and everybody else, on top of all of this, the NSA is gathering the information that Facebook and the other companies are collecting on what we buy, purchase, and all of, the, all of those trends. Uh, Amazon, for example, and their, their uh, contract with the CIA to monitor the cloud. That's what, the, that's what Amazon and the CIA are doing with that contract, is monitoring the cloud. So the corporations are even handing over our behavioral information from what we buy to the CIA and the NSA. I mean, they're like, we're done as far as privacy goes. They're turning up the police into the extension of the, of the NSA. NSA has been caught disseminating domestic surveillance information to uh, state police and, and the DEA, which is illegal so that they can go out and, and this guy with license plate such and such, he's got a bag of coke in his back seat, came from the NSA to the police. That ought to make the hair on the back, back of your neck stand up. So they've been doing that. All global electronic traffic is what the NSA has access to. That's why our allies are so mad at us, is that we're, we're picking up their stuff, from, also from their leaders. Now everybody spies on everybody else. I know coming from that world, Friends spy on friends, enemies spy on friends, everybody spies on everybody. Uh, but when you take it to an extreme like this, uh, it starts getting out of hand. And uh, it has not made us real popular, even with, even with our allies. All right, <clears throat> shift gears a little bit. Remember I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve, and we'll keep moving because uh, this, is, this is being taped. I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve. Now, we all hear about that. Uh, Rand Paul, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Rand Paul, by the way. I think he's probably one of the only constitutional senators left. Some guy just attacked him, I guess broke five of his ribs or something. Uh, strange, but uh, Rand Paul is, and, his, and his dad, Ron, have been calling this for years, and they're trying to make, they're trying to make Ron Paul look like your crazy old grandpa from the attic, because he's, he's been after uh, the Federal Reserve since, for his entire career, he's never changed. The Federal Reserve, I want you to understand what the Federal Reserve is, and you'll never look at the Federal Reserve the same again. Uh, it is the engine of the deep state, you could call it an economic shadow government, easily, because it runs our economic government, and it's international, no doubt. It was started by a secret society of elite bankers I mentioned, a globalism through the CFR, primarily the House of Morgan connected to the House of Rothschild, with a lot of very deep occult connections and occult societies and occult practices. Um, just, a, just a fact. Uh, global economy, the CFR, along with the Federal Reserve, the goal it was and still is a global economy. They want a global economy, a world order economy. You can call it the new world order if you want. You can call it the international order if you want. But they do have now a global world economy that's being run through the Federal Reserve and is controlling our economy right now. And that's been going on since 1913. World's leading international banks, Morgan, Rockefeller, Rothschild, War Warburg, are behind our federal, our federal Reserve. They're behind that. Their banks are behind that. There, there are 15 branches of the Federal Reserve, and each branch is an international bank outside the United States that is controlling the U.S. economy. Complete control over our economy and freedom. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is appointed by the president, but it's meaningless because it's not a federal agency. But it makes it look legitimate like it is a federal agency. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is a figurehead appointed to make it look like it's legitimate. The real head of the Federal Reserve is the director in New York that does this in secret behind the scenes. Janet Yellen and, and others that are the figureheads are not the ones that run the show. It's the director in New York who really does it in secret. It is not a government agency. The Federal Reserve is not a branch of the federal government. It is a private bank, internationally connected private bank. Twelve branches, directors from international banks, I mentioned that. There are no reserves in the Federal Reserve. There's, not, there's no reserves in there. This is, a, this is money laundering coming from international banks into the U.S. economy. So it's not even a reserve. 
It's a fake name. Uh, these international bankers have no loyalty to the U.S., the U.S. sovereignty or the government or anything else. They have loyalty to their national banks, to their country, and yet they're printing our money. They're loaning, they're loaning loans to our major corporations or holding those loans back so the corporations go down. These are federal banks doing, or international banks doing this to our federal government. Deliberates in secret. What did I say about secret before, secrecy before? This is the shadow government economic system. Their deliberations are in secret. Their members are in secret. Their budget decisions are in secret. They cannot be audited because all, all of their accounting is secret. What happens when things are secret? Something, something's, something's wrong with that picture. They can't even be audited. Con Congress has no access to what the Federal Reserve is doing. None. And no oversight whatsoever. And never has since 1913. They have total control over the U.S. economy. Now just think about that. A private secret bank that does everything in secret that is run by international banks has full control over our, our economy. Full control. They have the power to manufacture currency, quantitative easing. You remember that? Just printing money like, like uh, Monopoly money just out of the blue with nothing to back it up, a.k.a. $20 trillion in debt. They can manipulate interest rates on all of our loans, house, car, student loans, and everything else. The Federal Reserve can manipulate those any way they want, and it's not a U.S. government agency. Decides the entire economic condition of the United States. Unilaterally determines the value of the dollar. The, the Federal Reserve, if, if it wanted to, could crash our economy just by simply devaluing the dollar. And it has the unilateral, it is solely can do that all by itself. Adjust the value of the dollar up and down, which would do whatever it wants to the U.S. economy globally. It's responsible for the creation uh, and elimination of corporations. It can lend money to a corporation or it can withhold money from a U.S. corporation, either create it or destroy it. And it's not a U.S. organization. Eliminates the freedom of the United States through financial control. Controls our purchases of our houses, our cars, our employment, our investments, our 401ks. The interest on our 401ks and everything else is controlled by the Federal Reserve. A non-U.S. entity. It's insane. So who's, our, who's the constitutional authority, or at least should be, not, not over the Federal Reserve, but who, who, who is the, the people's voice in Washington? Who's the, the authority, the constitutional authority in Washington? It's Congress, isn't it? It's our voice. It was set up so the people have control over Washington, D.C. through the Congress. So if you're the shadow government or the deep state and you want to control America, who are you going to go after? Who do you want to control the most? Congress. President's secondary as far as they're concerned. That's a seat that's filled every 48 years. They have, they have, they have an easy way of manipulating that, at least until now. <laughs> Congress. This is what the, what the Constitution says. Represents the people. It is our sole constitutional representative. Creates laws and legislation, right? Controls the entire budget, has the, the budget power of the United States, the, the power of the purse, they call it. They can, they can create or stop a federal agency by defunding it, supposedly, except for one. Guess which one that is, the CIA. They cannot control the CIA's budget, although they control everybody else. That is their constitutional authority. They have oversight of federal agencies, except for one that hides everything. No control over that. But that's constitutionally, that's the authority that they're supposed to have. They're supposed to help us, the constituents, so they, they'll promise us we're going to make your economic situation better, we're going to create more jobs, and then they go to Washington, and, and what happens? They change, right? With some good exceptions, a few, they change. They're supposed to educate the public constitutionally. That's one of their roles. They're supposed to educate us on government and what the government is doing. Now, there's a large part of the government that they can't educate us on, isn't there? It's called the shadow government. Um, it's one of the reasons your meek and humble correspondent is standing up here tonight, is, is, to, tr is to try to do that. Okay? So, Congress is the people's only voice. So Congress has the legal authority to control the CIA through its budget, the constitutional authority, right? It's got that, except for one thing. The CIA classifies and withholds all the documents necessary for Congress to do that. Paralyzes it completely. It is a rogue, out of control, unconstitutional, massive agency that Congress cannot control and was created without Congress. It's unconstitutional. Flat out. That's why we have the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. They provide oversight to the CIA, so we do have oversight. I was in there, and I know of accounts of entire closets filled with documents 
from the intelligence community that the oversight committees were supposed to be investigating that hadn't been touched for years, just thrown in the closet and piled up. Oversight committees are made up typically of four to five interns who have no experience in intelligence whatsoever, and I think they rotate out on the average every six months before they bring a new one in with no experience whatsoever. And the oversight people on the oversight committees, they are not appointed to the intelligence committees because they have an intelligence background experience. Did you know that? They're appointed by their ability to raise contributions for their party, Republican or Democrat. They get the seat based on that only, not on any intelligence background. I think the House Ways and Means Committee, I think they have to pay $100,000 to get a seat on that committee. They're, they're appointed by paying a fee to sit there. Yeah, that's how corrupt it's gotten. So uh, if you were a congressman or a senator, would you dig way down into the CIA uh, at the expense of your entire career, certainly your reelection, and perhaps even your personal life? Heck no. You think they're going to do that? No, no way. No, it's not going to happen. Not if they want to survive. The lobbyists, the Nick lobbyists that control Congress and senators, I think we, we proved that one. There's a revolving door from the Congress to the military-industrial complex. If you play the game right with the military-industrial complex and you legislate in their favor, Mr. and Mrs. Congressman, when you leave office uh, after about a year, we'll bring you over on our board and you make a few million bucks a year, uh, a.k.a. enter James Comey. James Comey left government service, went with Lockheed Martin. Guess how much he was making a year? Six million dollars a year. That's what they paid him. And then he rotates back in and clears Hillary Clinton of uh, espionage. Um, uh, so can you see how the things work? Sadly, Congress is now composed of statesmen. We don't have constitutional representatives, with a couple of exceptions. My humble opinion, maybe Rand Paul. Generally, Congress is composed not of constitutionalists, but statesmen and stateswomen. They have no intention of changing anything in Washington. They're careerists. They want to get reelected. They want to make speeches. Uh, and they want to stay in office as long as they can. They are not going to make any changes. They're not. They are statesmen. They are not constitutionalists. I mentioned this, and let, and let me do a little sideline here. When I wrote my book, Sweetheart, it's 20, 2012, I think is when it came out. Uh, I decided to take quite a bit of risk because I had seen this uh, to an extreme and come out and write from the Company of Shadows. And decided, okay, I'm going to go uh, to the press and I'm going to say we've got a constitutional problem here. Uh, there's, this shadow government is controlling Congress. So I called the Washington Post up, talked to the reporter. Oh my gosh, what a story. I'm like, duh. <laughs> what a story. I'll, I'll, I'll get right back to you. Washington Post, and I think it, it was his editor, I think more than him. I don't, I don't want to down him too much. I know who his editor was, but the Post took my story and went straight to the CIA and reported it. Reported everything that I told him, and then sat on it for a month, going back and forth and, and just lying calling back and saying, well, exactly what was that classified operation that you were involved in back then? I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, dude? You, are you trying to, you're either trying to trap me or you're trying to, you know, and it became pretty obvious over about 30 days. So I called the New York Times and they had the story out the next morning. And, and it, you can see it was the front page of the New York Times and the Washington Post pu published one on the front page. And it's just, just a fragment of what happened. But the point is, they went, the, the Post went directly to the CIA and reported it. And the Post is still doing that sort of thing. Uh, Operation Mockingbird. Matrix of Influence. CIA Operation Mockingbird. They pay, paid journalists, ended in 1976. Remember I mentioned that? It is now a voluntary program. And this is how they do it. The CIA runs what you call a quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, and that's the way the system works. Well, what the CIA does with the Post, New York Times, and others, and says, oh, I know, because I've seen this. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll give you uh, uh, sources, and whenever they, an anonymous source, whenever it's, it's the CIA. So New York Times says anonymous source, you know it that came from the CIA, automatically. So we'll, we'll give you this information about uh, Syria. You can publish that as long as you publish no nothing negative about the CIA, because as soon as you do, we cut off the spigot. And they're like, okay, all right, you just keep giving us information, we'll sell papers, and that's how they're doing it. That's how the CIA is manipulating the press, no doubt about it. I've seen it personally. The Pentagon had, had uh, the uh, journalists got a Pulitzer Prize for this. The Pentagon had a Mockingbird program where they were paying, I know a couple of them, they were paying generals to go out on, in the news media and try to make it look like the war in Iraq was uh, valid. And it was, it was a whole disinformation propaganda campaign that this journalist uncovered, got a Pulitzer Prize, and it was a Pentagon Mockingbird operation. There are six corporations we now know that own most of the media, and I'll show you here in a little bit that those corporations, the editors are tied in with the CIA and they have a, they have a relationship going on still today, now, 
And uh, a lot of globalist funding from George Soros especially is going into papers, and they're, and, and they're funding a lot of these papers, and how do you think that's going to influence their reporting? And, of course, the journalists down at the bottom, do you think that they're going to go against their editor, who's talking directly with the CIA in this case, uh, and, and risk complete abject destruction of their career? No, of course not. They're not going to do it. With, with, with uh, I think one, one lady just came out recently, um, Cheryl Atkinson wrote a book, which I recommend you read, had the, the guts, bless her heart, to come out and wrote a book right on, man. They even, they even hacked into her computer, been there, and, and I think she got them. So awesome. So there are good people out there. Editors have an unwritten agreement with the CIA today. It's going on today. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in my case. It's happened in multiple cases. The CIA's management network is connected to the major news outlets. That's why you will not see anyone, and I have to include every network in this, CNN, CBS, ABC, and Fox News. You will not hear them dig down into anything with the CIA, will you? No offense to, to Bill O'Reilly at all, but I don't think in, in 12 years I heard him say one thing negative about the CIA ever, him or some of the or co other correspondents. I'm not pounding on Bill. This relationship is there. They are not going to dig. Because to do so, uh, it's going to be at the expense of their paper. This is, uh, I'd, rec I'd highly recommend you read Douglas Valentine's book. I don't, I'm not getting anything personal out of this. It's just a good book. It's called The CIA and Organized Crime. <laughs> read it sitting down. <laughs> I've read it. I can tell you he nails it. This is a quote from, from Douglas Valentine. This network of co cooperation pressures, uh, press the CIA exerts on the media equals political warfare against the American public. Absolutely true. The CIA, going all the way back to the CFR, is manipulating our national news media. And you wonder why they're not reporting on bad things they're doing in Syria. The massacring of the Christian village. The sarin gas attack that the Free Syrian Army did in Syria. Everybody wonders, why aren't they reporting on that? Well, this is why. Now you know. I re read the book. It's awesome. Uh, he also calls it a CIA domestic counter subversion operation that's going on today, and he is right. That's why everybody has a gut feeling that they are not being told the full story by the mainstream media, because they're not. And then we have organizations that are actually getting the story and the truth out there, and those are, those are the, I think we have one sitting right here, those are the heroes of today that are, that are taking the risk of doing the digging to get the information to the people. Thank God for the Internet, uh, maybe the last bastion of freedom of the press, the credible ones. The, you know, you've got to make sure, triple verify that they're credible, but they're out there. Okay, the CIA has its own public relations office. What do you think their job is? To go to Hollywood and to go to the press and make sure that they're only reporting favorably on what the CIA is doing. Maybe, remember the movie Argo, getting the hostages out of Iran? It was a crock. It was all propaganda. It was, that, that didn't happen that way. just made the CIA look really tough. The CIA actually consulted on that film, and it's a good film, very good film. Good acting, but it's baloney. Um, Zero Dark Thirty, uh, the CIA had a hand in that one, and I think they actually uh, gave them some classified information in that movie to try to make the CIA look really good. So they have a public affairs office that actually does that. It's connected to Hollywood to make sure that they make movies uh, the right way. Media blackout of criminal behavior, you, you do, and I've said this a few times, I'll say it again, you do not see the CIA, excuse me, you do not see the mainstream media reporting on some of these dark CIA operations. It's absent, isn't it? It's not there. You've got this unconstitutional dark organization that's engaging in violations of the Constitution and the press will not report on it at all? I mean, it, something's going on, and I think, I, I think we know what that is. Uh, it's crazy. The media is the fourth branch of government. They're supposed to be telling us the truth and what is going, but they're not. I mean, they're bought, sold, and paid for. We also know now that these editors are taking money from billionaires who have direct uh, connections to CI-linked think tanks and, and uh, funding organizations. So billions of dollars indirectly is going through the CI into the national news media uh, and, and uh, to the assistance of some of these editors. Mockingbird is alive. I mentioned my book from the Company of Shadows, thinking that uh, the press would a was actually going to be interested in a story about CIA corruption. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> See, I didn't know all this back then. This caused me, that caused me to start digging and find this stuff out. Uh, uh, that's why you don't see whistleblowers coming out. And I'll show you more here in a moment. That's why whistleblowers don't come out. The press is gone. There is a, there is a, a, a 
perfected system of personal destruction where they will take you out if you try it. But sadly, the news media is compliant. So the national media is compliant with CIA censor and propaganda today. Is, is that chilling? Big time. So the, the, the popular thing out there now as well, you know, the, this deep state, these are Obama holdovers from the Obama administration, John Brennan and others that are leaking information to the press. They're holdovers from Obama, and they're not part of the rest of the government. Uh, that's a sham. Brennan goes all the way back as chief of station in Saudi Arabia under Bush, Clinton, and both Bush administrations. He's been a shadow government operative for over almost 30 years. He's not an Obama plant. We need to understand that this is not a partisan Republican or Democrat issue. This is a constitutional issue. For example, Clinton uh, and the Bush senior uh, were engaged in the Iran-Contra affair, affair the, the destruction of, of evidence, illegal provision of arms to Iran, and running drug money. Okay, that is a Democrat and a Republican. And you notice how they're all buddy-buddy now? They're hugging each other and loving on each other. It's because they got the goods on each other. They know exactly what they did back then. And even though they're supposed to be arch enemies, they're best buds, man. George W. Bush, Iraq, NSA surveillance, torture, secret prison, prisons, warrantless white tapping. Barack Obama prosecuted more leakers than any other president in history, including John, my friend John Kiry Kiryakow, prosecuted by Barack Obama. Uh, he expanded the NSA surveillance program and allowed all 17 intelligence agencies to have access to NSA surveillance results. I think he did that his uh, second week before he left, left office. Massively expanded the NSA surveillance powers. It's a democratic administration. And, of course, Syria, Free Syrian Army, and eventually uh, popped into ISIS. Hillary Clinton. Saudi Arabia ran guns in through, into Benghazi through Saudi Arabia and Qatar as a cutout in a secret operation to arm the Free Syrian Army. Democrat, not a Republican, not an Obama. Uh, uh, she was doing that as Secretary of the State. Uh, she was directly connected to Wall Street and the military industrial complex. We're finding out now. She was making 500,000 bucks a speech, I think, to them. She was working under the Obama administration, a Democratic administration. She uh, was running guns, secretly running guns. Remember Iran-Contra under Republican in, in administration? Now we're doing it under a Democratic administration. Same old, same old. Congress, Republicans and Democrats, they promise their voters one thing, and what do they do when they get to Congress? They support shadow government, deep state wars, secret operations, and approval of government surveillance. Do you know that Congress was aware of the NSA domestic surveillance program? The Gang of Eight approved it. Congress is aware of the Free Syrian Army. Many of them approve. This is Congress, our representatives, Democrats and Republicans. Shadow government is, has, doesn't care about political parties at all. Not at all. It's pan-administration, pan-party. So uh, let's look at control of congressional hearings, constitutional violations. And, and again, getting back to what I said in the beginning, a violation of the Constitution is what? It's a felony, right? So I want to go through some of the, the, the constitutional violations that the U.S. government has done down through the years up until now. Constitutional violations by the shadow government, a.k.a. the U.S. government. Control of congressional hearings, withholding documents and testimony, blocking Congress from covert programs, classifying and concealing illegal operations, running drugs to pay for these things, establishing covert funding from illegal activity, Operation Gladio, surveillance of the Congress and the Senate, if we could imagine that. The NSA surveilled Congress and its discussions with Israel, actually tapped into their phone calls on Capitol Hill. Control of the judiciary, the FISA court and the state secrets privilege, use of our tax dollars with no approval, surveillance of the U.S. citizen, violation of the Fourth Amendment, all constitutional violations, all felonies. Officials lying under oath, the DNI, the CIA, NSA, all those officials have lied to Congress under oath, and I've got examples of every single one of those. Secret operations involving human rights violations, Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, MK Ultra, the dragging of U.S. citizens without their knowledge, on and on it goes. Silencing whistleblowers. Uh, most people don't know that if you work for the intelligence, uh, any intelligence organization, when you sign the, the form for employment, you give up your constitutional right to trial. Now, those of you listening to me now that are working in the intelligence committee, you probably didn't know that, did you? You have no right to trial. You don't know that, but you sign that away when you join up. So if you think you're going to take uh, the NSA or the CIA to trial with your constitutional rights, not going to happen. You gave those rights up without you knowing it. Secret prisons, rendition, torture, the NDA, indefinite detention of Americans. Everybody knows about that. If the government, if there's a national state of emergency, they can round up anybody they want with no habeas corpus, no probable cause, no trial, lock them up, deny access to an attorney, their family, or anyone else. They have that authority right now. And I don't know if you know it, 
that based on the war on terror, uh, an intentional choice of words, we are still in a continual state of emergency after 9-11, which based on continuity of government, they can suspend the Constitution at any time right now. Because they have, and uh, Obama extended it, and Trump is working on it. We'll see if the, if the shadow government gets to him or not. But if they st extend that, they can suspend the Constitution in the war on terrorism at any time. As it stands right now, they can do that. National security letters with the FBI under Robert Mueller can go into your employment if they decide that you're a terrorist. Now, their definition of terrorist, if you, if you examine it, includes uh, Greenpeace, the NRA, and other groups that they consider possibly uh, um, subversive by their own definition. So their definition of terrorist includes maybe some of us in this room here, depending on whether you're a Greenpeace member or NRA member. That's their definition of terrorism. Very, very broad. So they can walk into your place of employment with national security letters, and they can go to your supervisor, and they can say, FBI, national security letter, we want, it. We want you to give us all of the employment information, financial information on uh, Betty Jordan, all the files, hand them over to us, and if you tell Betty we were here, you're going to jail, you're going to prison. There's a statute that after 9-11 that says they can come into your place of business, access all your files, and if your coworkers or supervisors tell you, they will arrest them and take your supervisor to prison under the national security letters. Then, of course, you have the warrantless searches. They can break into an American's house without probable cause, violation of the Fourth Amendment, search through all your records and files, and leave without you knowing it. Biggest violation of the Fourth Amendment in U.S. history. Robert Mueller, special prosecutor, oversaw these programs. Drone assassination program, there's a presidential kill list. They, on the average, there's 100 people on that list, and they, they have meetings where the president goes down and goes, uh, that one, and they'll pick which, which person they're going to drone next. Problem with that is collateral damage. They just killed 34 innocent people, I think, last week. Uh, there was a military strike, uh, so they will, pick, they will pick a target based on behavior now, and they will take out that target and anybody around that target. No wonder... No wonder the world's mad at us. 9-11, uh, as I mentioned, we are in a continual state of emergency to cut through continuity of government. They can suspend our Constitution and engage in indefinite uh, detention if, if, uh, if they think it gets to that point. Constitutional violations, uh, huge. So what is, how does a shadow government do it? And, well, what they do is they reward the faithful. See, if you stay faithful and you don't rock the boat at all, then they'll reward you for doing this. This is George W. Bush awarding George Tenet the Presidential Medal of Freedom after George Tenet did this, provide falsified intelligence leading to the Iraq War. Biggest military, military mistake in U.S. history, being taught that way at the war colleges. Gives him a medal. Tenet also withheld critical information prior to and after the 9-11 attack and obstructed justice. He, he engaged in and manages and supervised the torture, rendition, and secret prison program. George Tenet did that. And... He invoked the state's secret privilege to seal cases against the CIA more than any other CIA director in history. So does he get in trouble for it? Is he indicted for it? Maybe not appointed to another position? No, he's rewarded. Guess who his chief of staff was while he was doing all of this? None other than John Brennan, who was later rewarded as, guess what, the director of the CIA, who continued the torture program, the drone program, he spied on the Senate and invoked the state secrets privilege. See how it works? That change just keeps going on and on. No one ever gets indicted or arrested. You see these wonderful congressional hearings with Trey Gowdy, who's an awesome orator, and uh, Jason Chavitz when he was there, pounding on these people, suitable for framing what they were saying. But did anything happen? No, nothing. They presented a beautiful case and then nothing happens. It's the way it works. Lying under oath before Congress. Let me give you some examples. Lying under oath before Congress. These are government officials lying under oath and getting away with it, not even being charged with anything. James Clapper denied the domestic surveillance program. Remember that film? Uh, and, and it was Ron Wyden who just was just cooking him like a piece of bacon. Uh, no, I'm asking you, uh, how has the NSA spied on U.S. citizens? And, and Clapper, I, I'm a behavior now, so my... Master's degree is in forensic psychophysiology. That's a big word for detection of deception. <laughs> and uh, the director of national intelligence was not aware of his body language at all. I don't know if you've seen the tape, but are you spying on American citizens? <laughs> uh, no, I'm asking you again. That's because all the nerves in your face are firing. I'm asking you again, are you spying on American citizens? <laughs> oh, not wittingly, he says. <laughs> Lies under oath. 
and it does a terrible job of it. He's not even good at it. John Brennan uh, denied, no, we didn't spy on the Senate. No, no, we never did that until they caught him. Oh, yes, you did. We got the, the IP address trail right here. It was you. Well, oh, okay, I guess we did. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, he says. General Keith Alexander, uh, General Alexander, director of the NSA, um, you, you've been spying on the American people um, to a huge extent. How many terrorist attacks have you stopped through that surveillance? Well, 50, at least 50 times. Congress being, I think it was Ron Wyden again, I think, being smart. Okay, go back and get us those cases and come back. We'll reconvene and I want you to show us those 50 cases. He comes back. Well, I couldn't find them. What do you mean you couldn't find them? Well, they're kind of hard to track down. Um, okay, well, how many cases did you find? Uh, maybe uh, well, uh, there was about four. Okay, go back and get those four and bring them back to us. And comes back and goes, well, uh, couldn't really find those either. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but you missed the Boston bombing, didn't you? Well, well I guess so, yeah. So uh, they could not provide one case where the NSA domestic surveillance program had caught a terrorist attack. Not one. And yet he said originally there were 50 until they caught him under oath. FBI Director Robert Mueller denied using extensive warrantless searches. Uh, and this is, you've got to watch this one. Director Mueller, how many times has the FBI entered an American's house illegally? Oh, uh, to my knowledge, I think there's... Uh, I think he said 47 times in terrorist investigations. Okay, well, let's reconvene. And some really smart congressional staffer went out there and did some digging, probably talked to some FBI agents, came back and said, uh, okay, let's ask you that question again, uh, Mr. Mueller, because we got evidence here that you did it 2,000 times. Okay, 2,000 times, he says. Uh, 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry I lied under oath, but 2,000 times. Okay, I'll go with that. So they go out and they do some more digging, and, and they found out it was at least 4,000 times they'd broken into people's houses. So they get him back on the hot seat. You've got to watch this. And, and he's like, uh, okay, uh, Director Mueller, you said 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right, 2,000. Well, we, we have evidence that it's actually at least 4,000. Oh, okay, that's probably more accurate. It's probably, probably 4,000. So they said, uh, uh, Director Mueller, tell us, please exactly how many times the NSA has entered an American's home without a warrant. And if you can believe it, what he said was, uh, I don't really remember. And they let it go. Yeah, I mean, you gotta watch it. You, you stop the tape and it's like, what? Uh, and and they, just, they just dropped it. You, you're the FBI director, you're breaking into an American's house without a warrant, and you don't remember how many times you did it. Uh, that's called lying, maybe, under oath. Anyway, I mean, it gets ridiculous, but they get away with it. Why? Because of the system. Secretary of, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton denied the orders to reduce Benghazi's security, amongst other things, said she did not do that. She did not sign off on that until they found an affidavit demanding security be re reduced with her signature on it. Uh, she did do it. Lied under oath. Anything happened to her? Perjury? Charges? Anything? No. No. And this is not a partisan thing. This is a shadow government thing. They get away with it. Attorney General Eric Holder caught spying on American journalists, spying on reporters. They, uh, he was actually held in contempt of Congress. Uh, Attorney General, did you spy on James Rosen, and did you spy on these other 100 uh, AP journalists? No, I never, no I never, I'd never sign off on anything like that. Oh, yeah, what about this affidavit with your signature on the bottom approving that to happen? I'm not talking any further. And they cited him with con contempt of Congress. Lied like a chihuahua under oath, and, and with no repercussions at all. Uh, incredible. But the shadow government protects its own. So, uh, Dana Priest and, and William Arkin did an incredible stu stu uh, uh, study in their book. I think it's called Top Secret Amer America. They said this, the top secret world of the government created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 has become so large, so unwieldy, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exact how many agencies do the same work. Not even Congress knows the size and extent of the shadow government because it's created outside of Congress, obviously. They, they have no idea what, what this thing is doing. It's a separate secret government that operates outside the Constitution, and that should cause everybody to pause right there. Secret government that operates outside the Constitution. Have we created a monster? We didn't create it, but we let it be created. Have they created a monster? Yeah, it is a raving, massive monster.